so I'm Christophe Cornu from the section of health and education at UNESCO. Um, I think that the priorities for the UNESCO chair on global health and education um, should be the following. I mean, obviously, I'm talking from the perspective of UNESCO. At UNESCO, we support our member states and are in the area of health and education, and we're supposed to provide them with uh, um, guidance on what works, what doesn't work, based on the best evidence, based on best practice. So uh, we would expect from the chair that um, they tell us what the best evidence is, uh, what works, what doesn't work, what doesn't work when it comes to uh, different areas of uh, health education. And uh, so that's one thing, really, for us to be able to uh, provide um, guidance to our member states and explain to them, explain to ministries of education and ministries of health uh, what they should do. Um, all, but the, 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 the other thing that is important is that in many um, occasions it's um, difficult to define what evidence is and what best practice is. And we have a, a few key principles at UNESCO. One of them is that um, everything we recommend should be evidence-based, but also uh, that it should be culturally sensitive. And I think that the chair can help us um, define what is evidence in a world that is global, but where there also are still very uh, many cultural and social differences. And what works in one context might not work in, other con in another context. And we need to understand why, and we need to understand the implications of recommending um, best practice to different countries and different regions. So I think that's going to be something very useful coming from the chair. And a third um, very interesting um, outcome that we would like to see from this chair would be to bring together um, researchers in health education, health and education, and practitioners um, from different regions and different countries again, and uh, help them work together to make sure that the, 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 um, the interventions, the programs at country level are based um, on evidence. Now, um, in terms of uh, what um, works to prevent NCDs, um, I think that based on our experience, um, here at UNESCO, having worked uh, on different uh, areas of health and education, um, we know that uh, social and emotional skills are something that are common to uh, most successful interventions to prevent, um, uh, for example, um, the use of uh, alcohol, tobacco and drugs. We had the opportunity to work together with UNODC and WHO on um, education sector responses to the use of alcohol, tobacco and drugs. And we saw that uh, the strengthening the social and emotional skills of children is really something that makes a difference. And we've seen that um, for other uh, health issues. So um, that's really something that uh, we think works. Obviously, this is what uh, should be taught to her, um, but there's also the, the issue of uh, how uh, social and emotional skills are taught. And that's the issue of uh, um, uh, classroom management of teaching. And we know that uh, it's uh, absolutely essential to train uh, educators um, because many educators have no clue how to um, uh, train or how to strengthen the social and emotional skills of children. Very often, teachers know how to teach contents and how to um, provide information. But obviously, when you um, talk about um, successful uh, health education, it's very much about interactive uh, methodologies, which means that teachers have to be trained in these methodologies. They have to be trained in how to uh, manage a classroom properly. Not everything is, the, is in the curriculum. It's also in the way um, um, 
is, is the way education is, is, is uh, conducted. So uh, based on our experience, we know that that's definitely something that makes a huge difference, uh, difference in preventing NCDs.